Welcome back, Pokemon fans. Round 9 Toronto Regional Championships brought to you by Legendary Gaming Network. Before we dive into the match, we just have a quick word for you. Looking to purchase some Pokemon card singles you have seen being played today? Head over to trollandtoad.com for all your Pokemon card needs. The massive inventory is always stocked with the best cards at the best prices. We also offer free shipping on orders of card singles over $25 within the U.S., Get 10% off your order of Pokemon singles now through March 11th when using coupon code POKEMON10 at checkout. Trollandtoad.com also has one of the best buy lists on the web, giving you the ability to turn your cards into hard cash. Head on over to Trollandtoad.com to buy or sell your Pokemon cards today. Today. John Kettler. Right now. Kirk Dupes, Next Dubay. Round nine in the hole. Cal checks us. We've got a matchup for you. We know we've got some headphones back there. We're bringing you Pablo Tablemon Meza all the way up. We're bringing you guys the sauce right now. This is the winning in. This is where all the chips are on the line. This is everything on the line. This is thousands of miles people have traveled, and it really comes down to just one match. Yep. Ty is not going to get them there. They need the clean W here. Andrew playing something uh, that we've seen a couple times, Trevenant. Pablo, though, playing something we haven't seen on stream yet. Kind of a Zapdos toolbox, almost something out of standard uh, with, right. with Zapdos and uh, Jirachi. That's exactly right, and it's a deck that, to be honest, we've kept an eye on, but we haven't really had a chance to put it on stream until right now, where there are a lot of attacking options where... Zapdos with its Thunderous Assault is dealing really big, efficient damage for only one single Lightning Energy. And with Electro Power adding more damage on top of that, it's becoming a really reliable attacker. But looks like we're about to see it right now. We've got Trevenant versus Zapdos. Looks like Pablo starting off with uh, the, the Wish ability of Jirachi, uh, putting it to sleep. Looking at the top five, not too sure what Pablo grabbed there. Yep, and definitely one of the ideal starters to have. But Andrew Amistad has a pretty interesting inclusion in his deck. Now, we've seen a variety of different things in the Trevenant lists, but we have seen Ditto Prism Star as a consistent, reliable, effective fifth version of Phantom, just to make the list more consistent. Well... Andrew takes that a step further and includes a single copy of the Stage 1 Pokemon Alolan Muck from Sun and Moon with its Power of Alchemy ability to shut off all basic Pokemon's abilities in hands and discard piles, wherever you name it, it's going to be shut off. And with this deck, with Pablo's deck being so reliant on abilities, including that Jirachi to set up, and the Tapu Koko GX, and the Tapu Koko Prism Star to accelerate its Pokemon that's going to be pretty rough if he gets it out into play. Uh, Jirachi, Prism Energy, Muscle Band in the active. Lily, I believe it was her five, versus Seeker, putting Lily back in hand. Couple Energy, but it doesn't seem like Pablo found a way to get um, uh, a Zapdos down. Enhanced Hammer going to knock off that Prism Energy, and Pablo's start not as great as maybe he'd want it to be. Um, especially against a deck that could lock him out of um, items turn one. And maybe even lock him out of day two at this point, where with Pablo's situation right now, he has the attackers to win this game. He has the ability to put pressure on Trevenant, even with all that item lock, even with the energy denial. There's a limit to all of that, and if he's able to withstand that limit... He has the cards to keep himself going. He runs nine energy. He's not like one of these Night March deck lists where they only run four double colorless energy. He's not like other decks where he only runs special. He does have some lightning energy to help him out. But at the same time, he is effectively on a clock if he doesn't find those energy. Uh, a let loose from Andrew after playing uh, a Bridget down and getting uh, Ditto Prism and two Phantom. That's got to be a red flag for Pablo. Um, Ditto Prism coming down instead of perhaps something more common that we've been seeing like the Wobbuffet. Now, as we see from the list that Andrew's playing, he isn't playing normally a Wobbuffet. So some, some signals have got to be going up to Pablo mm -hmm. that something's up with that Ditto Prism. Yeah, that's the thing with Ditto is that it, with its ability, it can turn into just about any stage one 
out there. So it could be something is from his point of view as benign as a mag cargo to put something on top of the deck with smooth over, or it could be something as game shaking as Alolan Muck. And I think from Pablo's point of view, Alolan Muck would be one of the more common things to evolve from a Ditto Prism Star as just a random one of inclusion. So he's probably already getting ready for that and will probably also want to get that Tapu Koko's ability used ASAP. Yeah, absolutely. Pablo, uh, Lillian back up to six, uh, kind of a supporter heavy hand. Doesn't really have a good way to get that lightning energy in his discard to use Tapu Koko's ability. Um, Shrine of Punishment off of the first Stellar Wish of Jirachi and just going to flip for sleep. Jirachi's awake, but not exactly the, the turn that Pablo would have liked to uh, like to see. No, and to be honest, it feels kind of like the only real attacking pressure that Pablo's putting on Andrew right now is either just maybe a surprise Zapdos if he top decks right, or an attachment to the Jirachi and then slap for with with that muscle band 50. That's not really too much. And with Dance of the Ancients on a clock right now, his energy acceleration is potentially threatened. Yep. Uh, Andrew uh, just attaching, evolving to Trevenant Break, attaching a psychic energy for the turn. Pablo Meza passing after one stellar wish. Uh, Jirachi is not awake. Dowsing Machine off the top might unlock Andrew's hand to, to keep pushing forward uh, while uh, Pablo doesn't even have an attacker on the board. Such is not the case. Dowsing Machine finding no value and Jirachi is awake again. Teammates off the top Oh, man. Are, are we just, uh, is Pablo just digging maybe for some way to get uh, this hand mixed back into his deck? I'm having a hard time. He has one copy of N. Only one copy of N. Maybe so, or maybe he's also trying to dig for other things to attack with other than get the old Jirachi with its 50 damage capability. And he actually, off of that Stellar Wish, he saw Zapdos. It's just he... I don't, don't see it in his hand. I don't think he got it, but he's at least getting the cards that he might need later. So I believe uh, Stellar Wish reads trainer cards, correct? So, um, that, oh, That's correct. That's correct. Can't, can't grab the Jirachi right away, but would love to see one roll off yeah. the top. Uh, ASAP. Uh, maybe start putting some pressure uh, with that uh, Thunderous Assault attack. Right, exactly. And the great thing about being able to get a trainer card is if he... If he does get that and if he is able to avoid having to just discard everything, then that's significantly better for him than what we're dealing with right now. Andrew finding that Alolan Muck, Power of Alchemy, going to be shutting down every single card on Pablo's side of the board. Definitely not what, uh, what uh, he wants to be seeing. Interesting that the Rescue Scarf going on uh, the Muck there. Yeah, and actually I like that as a little bit of foresight where Andrew's aware of how devastating Power of Alchemy is to Pablo's board. Shutting off Stellar Wish, shutting off Dance of the Ancients, and he's seeing a little bit of foresight here. He's not quite as worried about losing a single Trevenant, but that one alone muck. So it'll go back to the hand, and he won't be as worried about losing it permanently if that ditto got knocked out because it goes to the Lost Zone if it is knocked out. So Andrew playing an N, uh, going to give Pablo an opportunity to draw hopefully something, but uh, Pablo getting to rinse his hand out. Andrew trying to find that energy. Uh, doesn't actually need the energy to Silent Fear, but would be nice to get another one on board. If you have the, the knockouts, is it really um, worth Ning Pablo into, well, I guess if it's a hand like that, it just <laughs> doesn't matter. He actually flashed it to the camera. Yeah, that's five items in a... Prism Energy right there. Prism Energy getting a little more expensive with how popular it is in so many decks, but uh, it's not really giving Pablo a whole lot of mileage here, but that Guzma top deck definitely did. Uh, plenty of items in hand, and it's go time. Uh, Pablo pulling up the muck. Uh, Rescue Scarf looking a little out of place on that, but now all the items are on lock, and now we're going to start seeing some attackers hit Pablo's side of the board. Yes, sir, and chief among them is probably going to be that Zapdos with its thunderous assault attack, although the problematic thing here is that in order to play a Guzma to get more than what he has right now, he had he basically, by using that Guzma, he's 
running the risk of that Zapdos not being as effective as an attacker, which is probably why I see this Nihilego right now. Two more Nest Balls in Pablo's hand. Oh, excuse me, uh, Ultra Ball 2 Nest Balls. Uh, just thinning some items out because Trevenant obviously does stifle the use of items. Uh, every time an N runs through, you don't want to see those be recycled back in your deck because you won't be able to leverage them for any value. Pablo searching through. Grabbing, I believe that was the Buzzwool, baby Buzzwool with the right. uh, Sledgehammer attack. And another really one of the effective uses of that Prism energy, where even though the main strategy of the deck is just using cheap, effective lightning attackers to go nuts, you still have Buzzwool dealing its own effective damage too, and it's actually capable of knocking out Trevenant under the right circumstances. Another mystery energy coming down on that Trevenant break on Andrew's bench and an N. Uh, Pablo probably not too uh, upset about seeing that. Going to get himself six more cards, or excuse me, six new cards. Um, hopefully uh, some energy. Maybe. Hopefully a Zapdos. <laughs> hopefully something. Uh, I'd love to see Pablo announce an attack sometime in this game one. Yeah, that's exactly right. Although it looks like the really... Really, the only attacks I could imagine him announcing at any time soon. I mean, I would love to announce Thunderous Assault if I were him, but Nihilego might actually have to go for a Desperation Void Tentacles to poison and confuse the active Pokemon. So the main reason why you run it is for that Nightcap attack to be able to copy an opponent's attack with only two prizes remaining. But if you confuse and poison a Trevenant, that can put them back a little bit, although... To be real with you guys, with two Mystery Energy on that Trevenant on the bench, even that's not really feasible. So, I mean, Andrew would have to bring up the wrong no, Trevenant. No, 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 that's a double supporter. Oh. Didn't uh, he end uh, this uh, turn? Uh, did he? Well, who did? What, what? Let's go ahead and check real quick. Can we check the chat? Yeah. Okay, okay. we're good. We're good. Better safe than sorry, folks. Whew. God, Lee. I wonder if there's a reverse version of that uh, that emoji with the judge, like an upside Jeez, down one. Jeez, old Pete. Is that just how quick it was? All right, all right, fair enough. I am like still like my heart's pumping. I thought I thought I thought we were gonna have a uh, uh, just a miserable experience for this round nine game one. Uh, glad to see that, well, maybe not so glad to see Pablo just had to pass immediately. That is the third Dimension Valley down, though. Worth right. noting. Definitely worth noting, because going back to the Stadium War, if you are the one with your Stadium last in play, then you're going to get a huge board advantage over your opponent, where the Shrine of Punishment is whittling away that Lele bit by bit, which, if Pablo has any chance this game, being able to somehow knock out that Lele might actually be useful. Pablo taking a look at the hand. We see a couple a couple Zapdos in there. No energy. I didn't see a prism or a lightning nope. in there. Uh, and just a pass. Look at the damage just stacking up. And that is it. Pablo is now out of stadiums. That was the third shrine. And that is the fourth Dimension Valley. It'll come down to whether... Uh, Checking the list right now. Does Pablo play a field blower? He does not. So that Dimension Valley is here to stay. Yes, sir. But at the same time, that Alolan Muck looks like it's just chilling. It's just chilling in the active. Uh, does have a mystery energy on it. Maybe just trying to find another energy to hard retreat. Guzma, that'll help. That, that's a next turn. Doesn't even have to commit an energy anywhere he doesn't uh, want to. We'll be able to Guzma up uh, maybe that Nihilego nightcap and uh, start Silent Fearing again. Pablo shifting the Mons around. Zapdos finally, finally getting in the game here. Lily for two. Another Zapdos and a Prism Energy. Um... Going to open up that uh, Nihilego to use the Nightcap or Void Tentacles. At least give Pablo some options here. Uh, but now the Zapdos stepping into the fray. Dealing some damage and hopefully from Pablo's point of view to get that Alolan Muck off the board. Although 
to be honest, there really isn't that much to do, even if that happens. Uh, that's coming up. Are we going to see a tree slam double knockout on Jirachi? I think we might. Oh. oh. Yeah. That I mean, is that, a that, confetti that, that is of Trevenants going everywhere. The only confetti there. that could have been worse is if those cards got torn up, but my friend, that's still a confetti in its own right. We're going to see a, a tree slam knockout on Nihilego, 20 damage so going on the Jirachis, and that's a three-prize turn. Who needs a tag team GX on the other side of the board to take three prizes at once? And there we go. We got those three prizes out of the way, and I especially like that because it negates even the possibility of Baby Buzzwool coming in and swinging with Sledgehammer for 100 damage after resistance. Yep, skips the Sledgehammer turn. Um, maybe Andrew having uh, the quick reminder of that when Pablo, Pablo found it. Uh, with the Ultra Ball, had to reveal it, put it into, uh, into his hand. So, you know, that was a nice little uh, reminder text uh, to say, okay, I want to make sure I'm skipping the Sledgehammer turn. And we see a relatively grimy play that has to happen here on Pablo's part, where in order to get the extra damage on Thunderous Assault, he had to attach and retreat that Tapu Koko. Can't even use the uh, Dance of uh, Ancients attack to even power up a, f a f uh, future Zapdos. And I, I, are we in full tree slam mode? Yes, we, we are. are. My 60 friend. 20 pass. Pablo Electro Power off the top. Not a lot of value there. We do have a Zapdos. Going to hit the bench. Prism Energy, maybe. Going to find its way on the Zapdos. Not too sure what Pablo can do. Just going to hit for 10. Oof. You don't like seeing that. Pablo has not. Uh, Oh, and enhanced hammer on the prism energy. Andrew just running away with this one. Another tree slam for knockout. Let's put 20s everywhere. Yeah, that's definitely a new for me. And Andrew down to just two prize cards. Pablo hasn't been able to get anything going with such a wonky start. Um, the thing that Pablo has uh, to, to his advantage for uh, game two, uh, uh, which I assume we will get to, is that he now knows about the Alolan Muck. Exactly. And can yeah. operate uh, with that information. See, to be super honest with you, I get the impression that Pablo, after he saw the ditto, assumed that there was an Alolan Muck. But even then, he really couldn't have done anything one way or the other. Now, I feel like for the next game, Pablo's progress is going to really come down to just not starting with something that is abject garbage against item lock. And so as long as he just gets something streaming, something consistent and reliable, and especially if he gets a Guzma followed by a Via Seeker for the same Guzma play going on. That chain is really important to be able to get around item lock. Absolutely. Russell Parr mentioned that after his matchup. He goes, I'm not playing Guzma against Trevenant unless I have the Versus Seeker to buy it back immediately. Yep. If I don't have it, I'm not playing it. And uh, maybe Pablo can leverage that a little bit this game, understanding that Alolan Muck with the power of alchemy locking out all those Jirachis, that um, Tapu Koko Prism, can adjust accordingly, maybe take out that Ditto earlier, because as we know, Ditto Prism goes to the loss zone, and Andrew's list doesn't show another way to get that Alolan Muck going. Nope, although actually, if we're going to be even more real with you guys, it seems like in that game, not having abilities wasn't hurting Pablo as much as just not having the items and not having the way to stream stuff, so even if that Alolan Muck never hits the board at all, it might still be an uphill battle in some ways. I mean, Pablo's got a lot of good attackers to help him out, sure, but he needs to just draw them and draw them in the right order, too. Yeah, can't disagree with that. Um, we did see Jirachi be able to get him to shrines to bump stadiums and slow the game down a little bit to maybe open up the opportunity to come back. So a lot of, a lot of moving parts that Pablo's going to have to... to Keep in mind, be thoughtful of moving forward. That's um, right. Oh, and we've got that Nihilego start against a Phantom. Pablo already off to a better start here, in my opinion, getting to actually play a Nest Ball and get the correct Pokemon down immediately. Yeah. Um, we didn't see an attacker almost at all uh, in the first <laughs> five turns on Pablo's side of the board last game. Um, and we see a Zapdos coming down turn one. He's got to be feeling a little bit better about that series of actions. Unless you think that Jirachi with that muscle band and the lightning energy was looking like an attacker. It was like, oh, I'm Jirachi. Yeah, it was trying its best, but it wasn't fooling anyone. Everybody knew it was just there for the Stellar Wish. Uh, Jirachi, Switch, Stellar Wish, top five. Grab yourself a trainer there, Chief. 
Lily, that's a good one. Probably one of the best ones you could get. First turn of the game, if you play it as a supporter card, then you draw until you have eight cards in your hand. For the rest of the game, play it, and then you draw until you have six. So for here, that's going to be pretty crucial. It's going to be a big deal. Get Pablo a lot of the cards that he needs, potentially, including, well, a basic energy. Uh, and looking down the list, we've seen from so many Trevenants and Andrews too, max count on Enhanced Hammer. So if you go up against a Trevenant and you're not running basic energy, your specials are going to have a lot of pressure put onto them. But by getting that Lightning into play turn one, that is so huge because it's not going to go away without a whole lot of trouble and maybe a knockout. Pablo playing a, a nest ball down, uh, you know, just emptying his hand of those item cards that kind of plagued him last game. He couldn't really free up his hand from them and get to things of quality. Something to note, Pablo is not playing any Sycamore or Juniper. Um, and the reason that's important is those cards are phenomenal in these matchups where you're just trying to get to the air quotes, the gas. You can dump all these items that you won't be able to use anyways, right? and just get them out of the way. Whereas he plays four copy of Lily, which, as we know, adds to your hand, but doesn't rinse mm -hmm. your hand. And, so and, and it clunks up really bad against item lock. It sure does. So interesting consideration that probably carried Pablo through you know, his five wins and a, uh, two losses and a draw today, but really being on the bad end of that deck choice here in this matchup uh, in the win and in round here in Toronto. Able to Pablo able to use Versus Seeker to grab a Lily. Uh, he played another switch to get the new Jirachi in and be able to use Stellar Wish. Oh, and, and he's playing the Electro Power to burn it just to get it out of his hand. Just to get it out of there. Wasn't able to hit an escape board. Uh, Bridget coming down. Was that a natural Bridget again for Andrew? You know, I think so. We're going to see Phantom. I'm assuming Phantom, Phantom, uh, Ditto Prism if it's in there. There it is. One, yep. two, one, and two, three. three. Pablo taking a look. Got his hands crossed. Just watching uh, the game unfold in front of him. Andrew going to put those three Pokemon directly to the bench. Pick up his hand and see what he's got going on. He is going to get an attachment this turn. That means we are going to be able to use Ascension and get up to that Trevenant. Uh, that locks down Pablo's items with Forest Curse. Exactly, and at this point, Pablo's got to find some way to be able to wiggle around it. He needs, again, like we were talking about, not just Guzma, but Guzma with a VS Seeker to back it up. And granted, it's early in the game, so whatever pressure Pablo puts onto Andrew will be more valuable than it would be at different points. But it's going to cost something. It's going to cost one of those energy. Something Pablo can do, which I think will help him out in this matchup, is not play down that stadium until Andrew plays down a stadium Agreed. first. Because Pablo's playing one less stadium, he, he wants to get maximum value. He doesn't want to have his stadium knocked off without knocking one of Andrew's off himself. Precisely. And by holding on to that Shrine of Punishment, he's going to give himself a better chance of winning the stadium war here. He does hold on to that Shrine of Punishment. Uh, Andrew just going to take the 80 damage on the chin. Uh, I can Is that Mysterious Treasure dumping uh, Enhanced Hammer, I believe? Yep, that looks like it. So probably just going to get another Trev going. Maybe a Trev break to kind of prevent any knockout shenanigans. Uh, oh, he has the break in hand, so we're going to see another Trev. Oh, we're yeah. going to see another uh, Forest Curse Trev uh, just to get more... Uh, redundant item lock going so that he can continue streaming those and um, quite frankly get the same setup he did in game one yeah although I'm feeling a lot stronger right now if I'm Pablo even if it is not the best position to be in because at least you have a Zapdos dealing big damage turn two and a bit of a threat of a knockout for the next turn Mysterious Treasure is grabbing Tapu Lele uh, Tapu Lele Wonder Tag ability gonna grab Professor Sycamore Dimension Valley. And there we go. We've got that stadium war going on. Oh, and we've good got night. Oh, the Alolan Muck, too. Dimension Valley, Trevenant Break, Alolan Muck, Mystery Energy on the Alolan Muck, Clean Sycamore, get myself seven. And he's probably got at least one out to another Trevenant. You'd like to think so. Rescue Scarf is, is uh, at least a start. Yeah, it gets you, so. It gets you there. Um, taking the counter catcher, probably not going to get a lot of value here. We are going to see Silent Fear, 
starting to spread the love all over Pablo's side of the board. Muscle band off the top isn't going to get you too, too much. Pablo really hoping that Andrew doesn't have a way to another energy and that no, he can this, start getting some very damage. Bad in. If he did. And I like that single copy of Beast Energy here, both for the purposes of Nihilego and for Baby Buzzwool being able to deal big damage. And that is his way to be able to get past certain damage thresholds caused by the fighting resistance on Trevenant. Just a paltry 10 damage. That is not a thunderous assault. That's a thunderous poke. That's a thunderous it's cry. Like, yeah, it's getting like zapped by a, a light switch. That's barely anything. No, that's, a, that's like closed static is all that thunderous assault was. A little bit of clothing status, uh, static. We see Andrew just going through his turn. Yeah, he you, doesn't you, have to think about much anymore. He's just in cruise control. Hey, Kirk, you know how when you're at the grocery store or some other place and – when you touch something that's dry, it kind of shocks you a little bit, but mm -hmm. it doesn't actually come remotely close to hurting you. That's that, the thunderous assault. Yep. That's a 10 damage thunderous assault. Absolutely. Can't disagree with that whatsoever. Tapu Coco Prism off the top. Just a Alolan Muck laughing at it. Oh, man. What is Pablo's move here? He, his hand is energy. Cards he can't play, like Muscle Band. And are we just going to see another hit for 10 possibly we could maybe even see the baby buzz will become relevant at a point but even then this is actually where the psychic weakness can become a big problem because okay well you're putting a lot of energy on a buzz will great then it's just going to get knocked out okay so andrew benches that phantom uh, which is important to note because now the bench is full, and I don't know if Andrew has another supporter, but he did have a let loose Marshadow. Oh, nope, uh, Lolan Muck is on, so that is a moot point. Yes. Ignore me. I, I, I solved I solved the mystery before uh, before before I even got that got to that point. Pablo drawing, putting another Prism Energy down on and, Buzzwool, and it's completely charged up. Yep, Lily for three, just the slowest of burns here. Guzma, so. It, Pablo can do something next turn. And you know, it, this is actually a really awkward board position for both of them to be in, where if nothing at all is happening on Andrew's side, then actually I feel okay if I'm Pablo because I'm dealing little bits of damage. I'm giving myself that iota of an opportunity to win the game. And I think this might be a little bit more than an iota because we're getting a knockout on this turn. And Does Pablo need one heads on We're getting right? items too, yeah. And get those bands down. Get the band down. Guarantee yourself the I knockout. I wonder if he has a way around. to get that baby buzzwool out of the active and then reactivate thunderous assault. But muscle band coming down. So um, swing around 80, 130, and it had 110 HP yeah. left. Quick knockout on Tapu Lele GX. Here comes the Trevenant. Andrew still trying to find that energy. Uh, but now Swing Around can and do some big damage. Oh, and Mysterious, Mysterious treasure. treasure. Mysterious Treasure. I think there's only one copy of Tapu Lele GX. And there's nothing else to go grab. Just oh, another Trevenant. And, and, and you know what? Andrew's holding on to that. I think that's a copy of Silent Lab right there. So it seems like he's been holding on to it without playing it. He's. I think he's actually been comfortable just letting himself take damage maybe he's waiting for something to happen so that he can give himself a bit of an edge in the stadium more i'm not sure pablo has to be elated andrew's missed an energy for four turns i believe if i if i recall correctly I pablo's right pa pablo's gonna get another knockout here with this baby buzzwool it's still juiced up and it's still got plenty of damage to to take and i like what he's doing here too it looks like he's preparing the Tapu Coco Prism Star to be an attacker later in this game. I like this because Pablo has no fear of getting uh, tree slammed this turn because there's no Valley in play and there's no other energy on board. Andrew choosing to attach that mysterious energy or mystery energy on the Alolan Muck rather than kit up another attacker. And there's the Enhanced Hammer getting rid of the Beast Energy and a true sign of a veteran putting that Beast Energy straight into the loss zone, not even hesitating and accidentally putting it in the discard. Trevenant comes down, countercatcher pulling up Jirachi. 
might be able to pivot back. We know that Pablo chose the escape board uh, off of that Volkner last turn. Is there a new, another Guzma tucked away in there with a versus Seeker? Well, he did get it back right after the VS Seeker that he played. So it looks like he's going for that again. Looks like he's going to potentially get another knockout. And if Oh, and I think, I think I might see a second Guzma in his hand right now. Yeah, I do. Yep, so he's got that second Guzma getting that escape board down. And what's normally a pretty rough matchup is actually pretty favorable right now just because of all those bad energy whiffs from Andrew. Tails. Tails. Uh, so that's just hitting for 100. Uh, but now that muck in the active, and if Andrew wants to get it out of there, needs to commit an energy or play a Guzma. Exactly. Although the trade-off in losing that Alolan muck is that Andrew might be able to get back abilities again. So basic abilities, ways to draw more cards, and hopefully maybe sort of kind of get an energy. Pablo just ultra-balling away more items, just thinning his deck out now that this... Uh, Alolan Muck is in the active, just thinning his hand down. He knows he's got the knockout. Let me just Lily for three more cards. Let's just get cards out of my hand, from my deck into my hand, to allow me to have the most options possible. Use my items while I can. Rescue Stretcher going to put Zapdos right back in the hand. Might as well burn this Electro Power. <laughs> like, just chuck all that slop away. And I believe three Pokemon in hand, Guzma and N if I took inventory of that correctly. Yep, and because that ditto did not have a rescue stretcher on or rescue scarf on it, it's going straight to the lost zone. Counter energy, uh, interesting tech choice, just one copy of that in Andrew's deck, and he is certainly behind on prizes, so that counter energy is going to be worth dose. Not dose, Zapdos. But, dose but not Zapdos. We dose make but that not clear. Zapdos. Abundantly clear, dose is a Spanish word. Can, but can confirm can li um, literally can <laughs> confirm no, no that's not the right way to use the word literally but yeah go ahead sue me <laughs> so let's let see. loose but, is live now and andrew's wait, fishing we, for energy we are letting loose my friend we it's letting, round nine of course we're letting loose we're letting loose the the shirts unbutton we're getting uh we're getting froggy up in here in this booth but are we getting a dimension valley that's what andrew wants to see uh wants to be able to tree slam uh, on this turn. And yeah, Silent, yeah, Silent Lab, Lab back Super again. Rod, uh, Versus Seeker. Uh, that's, that's not what they wanted to see. That's grimy. Pablo going to be able to, with with two heads, take a knockout, right? I almost feel like it would have been better at some point, like several turns ago, to play the Silent Lab to counter the Shrine to avoid that knockout risk. Because he was sitting on that Silent Lab for a while, right? So if he did that, he could have negated the damage. He actually could have done a very soft deck thin here. With that Silent Lab, he wouldn't have seen it again at this point, and he would have given himself slightly better odds at hitting a D-Valley or an Energy or something. So something that would have let him attack this turn. One thing you're not considering there, if he plays the Silent Lab down, he can't let loose to try and refresh his hand. No, what, it, what I'm... Okay, yeah, that's a good point there. So it would have been hypothetically in play unless Pablo countered it with another shrine. Correct. That's a good point. Correct. So I don't know if Andrew was playing the long con on that, just trying to you know make sure that once this uh, <laughs> two two heads that time goes from two tails to two heads, what's that, 140? Just shy? And a little bit less because of the resistance, yeah. Oh, I thought there was a muscle band on there. There it is. Yep. There we go. 140. Give me 20 more, Pablo says. 20 more, Chief. Put it on the trail. Are we just bypassing that? What did I miss? I thought he got two heads on swing around. Yeah, he did, but resistance, so it's it's Math. dealing. It's so they're just negating each other. Yeah, Math, well. who needs it? Yeah, well. Quick Just maps. say a bunch. Yeah, a bunch. Yeah. Going to see an end come down. Pablo going to hit it with a quick shuffle. Pablo drawn three. Andrew drawn six. There's the D-Valley. And an energy, mm -hmm. too, for that matter. Andrew, oh, this this tree slam gonna be knocking out this buzzwool. However, it, it, Zapdos, uh, or excuse me, not Zapdos, but uh, Jirachi's getting wiped off the map too with this tree slam. Three prize turn. Oof. Now, uh, Tapu Koko GX uh, stepping into the active. You can use that ability whenever you want. Can you not? With the Tapu Koko ability? Yes. Well, I mean, we've got multiple things shutting off the ability right now. Right. We, si we've got the silent, silent lab. lab. Yeah. 
Um, but I'm just trying to say, once the ability is active, you could promote that and then get rid of it, right, to bring the Zapdos into the active as another way to power up Thunderous Assault? That's just what I'm asking about. Oh, before you actually remove it from the Lost Zone, into the Lost Zone, right? Mm-hmm. Dimension Valley, coming down, Rescue Scarf, Mysterious Energy, Silent Fear, and an N. Not Silent Fear yet, but Silent Fear is going to be on the horizon. N. Going to give Pablo three more cards, Andrew three cards, but you got Andrew's got to feel comfortable where uh, where they're sitting right now. Now that they have essentially all the pieces to the puzzle, maybe just wants to find uh, another energy just to make sure they can attack. There's the energy off the top. Phantom. Is that another N? Just no stopping the stream of uh, draw supporters since that let loose. No, and I think it's actually looking significantly better for Andrew in this point, even though he's still trying to come back a little bit from the awful four turns of no energy. At the same time, he's actually done what Trevenant does so often before, which is get himself in a better situation after a while. Although with that, that looks like that just that single prize left, Pablo doesn't have a lot of work to do. Yeah, that's uh, another two prizes. Uh, the the silent fear creeping yep, up on Pablo we go. has to we extend got the, the hand. Um, rough matchup, rough yeah. matchup for Pablo all around, especially you know item lock taking him out of the game, compounding interest with that Alolan muck. Uh, didn't didn't have I think as much of an impact game two that yeah. as it did game one where everything was kind of rolling. Uh, but Pablo unfortunately on the back end of variance there can't get that engine going. Uh, a lot of heavy damage hitting those Jirachis. Couldn't leverage the escape board. Stellar Wish. Um, Couldn't leverage a lot. I mean, I, I really like the effort, though, especially in that second game, just trying to do whatever you can to turn that into, if not a top 64 position to get more points, championship points, to, if if not that, maybe just give yourself the best shot of winning the tournament or winning the match in order to be able to advance. So, I mean, yeah, like a lot of stuff going against him, but I like I, I liked everything he was trying. I liked all those plays in game two. And the, even the little subtle details like the electro power drops at the very beginning, just to get those out and not have to deal with them is possible clutter in your hand. Absolutely. Pablo did his best to navigate uh, navigate that uh, matchup. Um, Trevenant showing itself again that uh, maybe this was the weekend to play the trees. Maybe so. I mean, we've seen Trevenant go both directions on stream today. We've seen people be patient and have the right tools and beat it. But on the other hand, we've seen decks that, I mean, and players who basically tried to do the same thing and it just didn't go for them. So, I mean, we've got a lot of Trevenant in day two for sure, and we've got a lot of good players using it at that. So, I could be, could be. It, it's not a definitive thing. We've got a decently balanced lot it looks like going into day two we don't know exactly but it's looking pretty good for trevenant yeah it's uh, it's well positioned a lot of interesting decks that we'll see in day two and we are going to come back uh real quick with a winner's interview john kettler and our round nine winner and now day two player uh andrew amistad so we'll be right back stick with us Hello everyone, welcome back to the 2019 Toronto Pokemon Trading Card Game Regional Championship. And I am here with our round nine winning in winner, Andrew Amistad. How are you doing? 
feeling good. <laughs> Glad to hear. Yeah. So maybe walk through with me a little bit why you decided to go with Trevenant for the weekend. Um, honestly, I wasn't comfortable with any of the new decks that were kind of getting hyped up, so I just kind of went with something I was comfortable with. Yeah. Um, did, did you not yeah. buy the hype, or did you try the decks and just uh, didn't feel like they matched your playstyle? Honestly, style? like, we... Tr like my test group we tried to buy out some pika roms to like test it oh, but yeah. like it the mirror was just too sketchy for me so i just wanted to play something that i didn't have to think too hard for yeah i, I watched <laughs> one of the mirror matches a few rounds ago i i, I can kind of see where you're coming from yeah <laughs> so uh so tell me this uh, i noticed there were a couple more interesting inclusions you made in yeah. the list and i've seen them in other lists before but they're not quite as common yeah the alolan muck mm -hmm. and the counter energy were those ever in doubt that you would play them? Um, the Alolan Muck came from a list that I got uh, on, like, Hey Fonte. Yeah. Um, the Counter Energy was just a, a nice um, addition because uh, I'm always playing from behind, so it just allows cool. me to come back. Um, but yeah, uh, the Silent Lab I threw in there because um, it was my only out to Pikaram to shut off Zero Aura, so I would just Counter Catch her in Silent Lab and pray and hope they can't retreat. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, yeah. hey, could you, would you mind walking me through just really briefly a bit of your tournament experience so far uh, what some maybe some of the decks you played against and some of the decks you feel like you're a little worried to see but you f and some of the decks you feel really um, excited to see going into tomorrow i'm probably worried about uh zorogarb and pikaram i think those are probably the sketchiest matchups for yeah. trevenant um it's it really all comes down to ending and praying they don't have an out <laughs> it's unfortunate that's how the deck works but uh yeah um if I can dodge a bunch of those tomorrow, then I think I'll, I'll have a good day. <laughs> well, hey, cool. Yeah. Well, uh, I tell you what, I'm going to let you go. But do you, before I do, do you have any shout-outs? Anybody you want to say hi to? Uh, yeah, like shout-out to everyone that tests with me. Um, shout-out to Team Canada. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, I hear cool. Canada is a pretty cool place, <laughs> yeah. especially Toronto. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks a lot, man. Thank good you. Good luck. Thanks. And with that, we will be closing out the stream for the evening in a little bit. So stick around. Hello everyone, and I guess also goodbye for tonight too, because for the 2019 Toronto Regional Championship, this is going to be our sign-off. I am John Kettler, aka Kyle Chexus on Twitter, and this is the one, the only handsome. Kirk Dupes, Snacks Dubay. On behalf of uh, Jeffrey Saran, Austin Masters, and Sierra Dawn, obviously John Kettler, Papa Blast, Aaron Lukenbach, Legendary Gaming Network, we thank you all for joining us today. We've got more action tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. Don't forget, Daylight Savings Time is tonight. That's right. You don't want to sleep in. You don't want to miss things. You don't want to wake up at 10 o'clock and be like, oh, I missed the stream. No, you want to be there. You want to watch it. Trust me, it's going to be great. And actually, some of these matches were pretty good, too. They're going to be going up on YouTube real soon. Personally, I think a lot of us... I think you can agree since you cast it. Round 7 was round pretty seven. dope. Round, round seven, 7 was pretty, was pretty incredible. I feel like most of the rounds were pretty great, too. There's a lot of skill to be learned. I really liked round 1, too. That was a lot of fun. Lots of variety, too.
Yep, so there's going to be a YouTube link dropped in the chat. Make sure to uh, subscribe to that so you can see when the videos go up. They will be all uploaded this weekend. Uh, again, just some personal quick hits to see. Uh, round four, game three, that insane Pikaram uh, matchup. Um, round seven, if you want to see uh, just Russell Lepar finessing with Archie's Blastoise that was uh, against a, a Trevenant deck, lots, lots round of six, going on there. that was great. You and I got to cover that one together. So lots of great content out there. Again, on behalf of everybody here at Legendary Gaming Network, we will see you tomorrow morning for Toronto Regionals 2019. Peace out.